Torn between the iPad mini and the iPad Air, in this video we're going to help make that decision a little bit easier. Let's go through it and find out which one is right for you. First and foremost, if you're here to see which one I would choose, it's the iPad mini. This is my iPad mini and I absolutely love it. I've got a full review and a one year later follow up video on this iPad. This is my mom's iPad Air and she absolutely loves her iPad Air. So let's talk about the differences and the similarities between Apple's two best iPads at the moment. Obviously, I love the portability of the iPad mini. It's so tiny, it's so compact, you can take it absolutely everywhere with you, but it's got its drawbacks. One of the problems with an iPad being this tiny is that some things like typing and doing things like that can actually feel a little cramped on it. So when you're deciding what you want for an iPad, it's important to think about what you want to do with it. Only the Air that has the ability to dock on Apple's Magic Keyboard and give you trackpad and typing support with a backlit keyboard. The iPad mini isn't left out of the keyboard game, but it only is compatible with Bluetooth keyboards. So if you're okay with a Bluetooth keyboard that cannot attach to the device, then that's fine. You can grab any keyboard you want and any trackpad you want and pair it. So if you've got an Apple keyboard already, it'll work with this. It's just, will it suit your needs? Both of these iPads are compatible with the clearly superior second generation Apple Pencil. Another thing to consider is color selection. If you are interested in getting this blue color, which I wish came on the iPad mini, I love this color not available on the iPad mini. There are more colors to choose from with the iPad Air. The biggest difference between these two iPads clearly comes down to display size. And that is a question that only you can decide. Are you looking for the most portable iPad to get all of your iPad needs? Or are you looking for the best value of an iPad that you can get across the board that gets you the most bang for your buck? It really depends on what's the most important to you. A full screen iPad at a decent price or an extremely portable iPad at a similar price. Out of the two iPads we're looking at today, only this one is compatible with Stage Manager. And that being said, I don't know that you'd want to try to use Stage Manager on the iPad mini. It would be a little crowded. Things you won't find on this iPad is a camera with a flash. The iPad Air does not have an LED flash on the back. That being said, nobody uses iPad cameras, so why does it matter? Having the LED flash on the back of this has actually been really handy. If I'm just using this device at night and I want to turn on the light, there's a little flashlight on the back and it's just as handy as ever. Of course, the decision also matters when you're talking about processors. The latest version of the iPad Air has the M1 chip in it. So you're getting desktop class performance on a device that really can't handle that desktop performance. There's no apps that fully take advantage of it. Will that change down the line? I don't know. We've been talking about the possibility of that for years and Final Cut coming or maybe not. DaVinci Resolve is coming to iPad OS finally. So there are some professional video editing apps, but that only applies to people who are video editors across the board. Is there software that you need to take advantage of that an iPad would help you with? Will the M1 chip benefit you? That really depends on your use case and what profession you are in. If you're trying to run iPhone apps though, the iPad mini almost fills the whole screen with those iPhone apps, so there's that. I use my iPad mini when I'm out and about, so I got cellular on my iPad mini. The iPad mini supports 5G and so does the iPad Air. If you are choosing an iPad and that is important to you, they both offer the same storage at 64 gigabytes and 256 gigabytes, and they also offer the same connectivity on the same networks. So you're not losing out on having 5G by picking one over the other, if that matters to you, which to me, I don't notice any difference on 5G, whether I'm close to a millimeter wave tower or whether I'm in the car on an LTE plus whatever it is tower. Both iPads also have the new and improved center stage camera. 
So if you open up your camera app, you've got a nice wide field of view that encompasses the whole room. If you're on a FaceTime call, it moves and tracks with you. So as I preface this video with, I chose the iPad mini. And the reason that I chose the iPad mini is I wanted a portable iPad that I could carry with me everywhere I went. My mom loves the iPad Air because it has a large enough screen that she can really utilize and enjoy the apps that she's working in or playing with at the time. She's been a big fan of the iPad Air and has had the iPad Air 2 and now the iPad Air with the M1 chip. Hopefully this video helped make your decision a little easier and pointed out some of the highlights of both the iPad mini and the iPad Air. If you enjoyed this video and it helped you out, definitely leave a like and a comment down below and subscribe to stay tuned for more videos like this in the future. If you have any questions on the iPad Air or the iPad Mini, I'd be happy to answer them in the comment section down below. I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.